Hello and welcome to the fourth and final section of this course. In it, we're going to be taking a look at some of the features coming to protocols in Swift 4 and beyond. We'll start by taking a look at how in Swift 4 you'll be able to define WHERE clauses on associated types as well as on protocol declarations. Then we'll be taking a look at how hopefully in Swift 4 we'll be able to express that a given concrete type conforms to a protocol if and only if a given condition is satisfied. And then finally, we're going to be taking a look at class and subtype existentials, which are coming in Swift 4. You'll be shown how to express a type that both inherits from a given class and conforms to a given protocol. So as said, first of all, we're going to start off by taking a look at associated type WHERE clauses. So in this video, we're going to be covering how to constrain associated types and protocol declarations in order to express important relations in your protocol. So, this is a feature that has been accepted and already implemented in Swift 4. Here's the Swift Evolution proposal for it. And you can see it comes with two main features, and that is, first of all, the ability to put a WHERE clause on an associated type requirement. And you can see here one of the main motivations for doing this is for a sequence's subsequence to ensure that the element type of this subsequence is equivalent to the element type of the sequence. This is a natural constraint to express, however until Swift 4 it was impossible to have the protocol enforce this itself. Instead it was just expected of conforming types. And the second feature is the ability to put a WHERE clause on the protocol declaration itself, and this provides you with the ability to enforce additional constraints on any derived protocols. So you can see here we have an int sequence that derives from sequence and comes with the constraints where the element type is an integer. So now int sequence represents types that are a sequence of integers and then it could go ahead and define additional requirements on top of this. So those are the main two features. Let's take a look at how they for example can be applied to the collection protocol. So here, you can see we've defined a very, very simplified version of both the sequence and collection protocols. And as discussed in a previous video, a sequence is simply an iterator factory that defines a make iterator requirement that returns an iterator in order to iterate over the sequence. And a collection is a sequence of elements that can be iterated over non-destructively, and in addition can be indexed, so it introduces an index type. It's worth noting that these declarations I've made of collection and sequence will shadow the standard library's sequence and collection protocols. Usually it's not a good idea to shadow standard library types, however in this case it's quite a nice way to visualise how changes to both the sequence and collection protocols as a result of being able to add WHERE clauses to associated types improves the protocols and makes it easier for you to work with them. So let's take a look at two examples of how we can currently use the collection protocol in Swift 3. So you can see here we have an extension on collection which adds a chunked by method. This method simply takes a predicate and what it returns is an array of subsequences where each subsequence with adjacent elements that meets the given predicate. You can see this is simply done by starting off at the start index of the collection and we simply repeatedly get the next index where the predicate isn't satisfied and at that point we add that segment to the resulting array and then we continue doing this until we reach the end index. And you can also see we've written another extension of collection where the element is equatable and we've added a default predicate for chunked which is the equality operator. So you can see for example if we have this array here if we call chunks on it we get out the adjacent elements that are equivalent. Next, you can see we've written an extension of collection, which adds a new subscript with an argument label maybe index. What this does is it takes in a possible index, and if that index is valid, it returns the element at that given index. Otherwise, it returns nil. So you can see, for example, with this array here, with three elements, the element at index two is three, so you can see we get our optional three. The index three, however, is beyond the bounds of the array. Therefore, we get back nil. 
However, one thing's not quite right with both these examples. The fact that we're having to add on WHERE clauses that basically state the obvious. So for example here, we're saying with the indices associated type, its elements must be equivalent to the collection's index. Well, of course, that must be the case. Indices should represent a collection of indices. With our earlier example, we had to state that the subsequence of the collection is a collection. That should also be the case. And for example, we're having to say that the subsequence's element type is the same type as the collection's element itself. And the same for the index. These are all things that collection itself should require. However, due to the lack of being able to add WHERE clauses to associated types, in Swift 3, it wasn't able to express this. So for example, when extending it, you had to add these constraints that really should be taken for granted. But in Swift 4, what collection does now is, for example, it has a constraint on indices that ensures that the indices element type is equivalent to the collection's index type. And now that we've added this constraint to the protocol, we no longer need to have it in the extension. And you can see in Swift 4, we'll get a warning saying that our constraint here is completely redundant. So we can simplify this by just removing the constraint from the extension making it a lot neater. With subsequence, things are a little bit more complicated. However, with subsequence, things are a little bit more complicated. The associated type subsequence is actually originally defined in the sequence protocol, and it's used as the return type for various sequence methods, such as prefix, which we're not including here for simplicity. In order to add additional constraints to subsequence, collection, therefore, had to redefine the associated type subsequence with the given constraints it needed. However, in Swift 4, this is no longer needed. What we can do instead is have a WHERE clause on the protocol declaration of collection itself. So we can just say WHERE subsequence conforms to underscore indexable and sequence. And then we can remove the duplicate associated type declaration. You'll note, by the way, that we're constraining subsequence to this protocol type underscore indexable, and the same with indices. What is this protocol? Well, the reason for this is due to the lack of recursive protocol constraints. For example, we cannot directly constrain a given associated type to conforming to the same protocol that it's defined in. You can see here we get an error that type may not reference itself as a requirement. Therefore, to solve this problem, the standard library introduced actually two protocols, but we've simplified it by just making it one protocol, which we've called underscore indexable. And this simply defines basic collection requirements, and for example, includes a subsequent associated type that's unconstrained, which we then constrain in the collection protocol. So this allows us to constrain both subsequence and indices to be types that mostly conform to the collection protocol. Although in practice, with types conforming to a collection protocol, they should satisfy the subsequence and indices associated types with actual collection conforming types. However, it's worth noting in Swift 4, we can express recursive constraints in a WHERE clause either on an associated type itself or on the protocol's declaration. For example, we can express that subsequence conforms to collection, and we can express the indices conforms to collection. However, it's worth noting that in at least the version of Swift 4 that I'm currently running, which is the version that ships with Xcode 9 Beta 2, there are still some rough edges around this. For example, if we go on and then try to remove the indexable protocol, I find that the compiler crashes when attempting to enforce the constraints that the subsequences index type must be equivalent to the collections index type. So therefore, for this demonstration, we're just going to keep indices constrained to indexable and the subsequence constrained to indexable. And this is actually what the standard library looks like currently. They're holding off expressing these recursive constraints in WHERE clauses. But once Swift fully supports recursive protocol constraints, for example, you can see there's a proposal to do this, which is accepted but not fully implemented yet, we should be able to remove the underscore indexable protocol. It's only really a workaround. And then we can simply constrain indices to being a collection and subsequence to being a collection. However, until then, we're just going to keep them constrained to indexable. But anyway, 
even with it being constrained to indexable, we can still now express the constraints we want to express on subsequence. So for example, we can express that the subsequence's element type is equivalent to the collection's element type. And we can express that the subsequence's index type is equivalent to the collection's index type. Because of course, collection requires that subsequences share the indices with their collections. And you can see now, because we've enforced these constraints on the collection protocol itself, you can see that now Swift 4 is telling us that these are redundant on the extensions, which allows us to remove them and allows us to make the extensions look much nicer. And furthermore, types conforming to collection now get help from the compiler, for example, ensuring that the subsequence's index type is equivalent to the index and the subsequence's element type is equivalent to the element. Another really nice improvement to the collection and sequence protocols from the ability to express where clauses on associated types is the ability to introduce an element associated type into sequence. And then we can constrain the iterator such that its element type must be equivalent to the sequence's element type. Now this is a really nice quality of life improvement because now instead of referring to iterator.elements, we can just refer to elements. And you'll notice this is exactly what you can do in Swift 4 with the standard library sequence protocol because this is exactly what they've done with it. And for example, we can now rename the indexables element associated type to just elements such that collection now only has one associated type for the element. And you can see we can now go through our code and replace all references of iterator.element with just elements, which allows us to simplify our codes quite a bit. So that's a look at how where clauses with associated types and protocol declarations themselves can bring great improvements to the collection and sequence protocols. Of course, it's worth noting that the collection protocol still isn't in the best shape, because we still have this underscore indexable protocol in order to work around for the lack of recursive protocol constraints. In an ideal world, once recursive protocol constraints are part of the language, we would want to express the collection protocol like this. So we would want to remove all references to underscore indexable, and we would instead want to constrain the indices to being a collection and the subsequence to being a collection. And then we will want to constrain index such that the subsequence's index type is equivalent to the index. So that's what the collection protocol should really look like. However, as you can see, it doesn't currently compile, but it will do it in a future version of the language. And this would also, for example, let us get rid of the last constraint here where subsequence conforms to collection in our extension here. But until then, we still have to use the underscore indexable protocol in order to work around the lack of conditional conformances. So, to recap, in Swift 4, you can add constraints to the protocol declaration itself in order to express any additional relationships that need to be enforced on the protocols that the given protocol derives from. And you can also add constraints to associated types in order to express relationships that the conforming type must comply with when satisfying the type requirements. For example, a collection's indices must have elements that are the same type as the collection's index type.